Hello wildflowers and welcome back to the Rambling Rose. Midsummer has arrived in the Australian Alps and the high heat of the sun is beginning to paint the landscape in a palette of shimmering gold and hazy pink. The fairies are calling me down to the meadows of dandelion and daisy and the weather is now warm enough to seek out solitude in quiet corners of the Sweetwater River. Here I can seek out a little rock pool pretending I'm a water nymph <laughs> and listen to the sound of the healing waters rushing by, cleansing my soul and refreshing my spirit. The long days have taken on a lazy, dreamy energy and I find myself contemplating the meaning of Letha. I found this quote to be the perfect companion to my thoughts at this time of year. I wish I could show you when you are lonely or in darkness, the astonishing light of your own being. Letha marks the summer solstice, the point on the wheel of the year when the day is the longest. And to me, it really feels like a festival of the sun. Also known as Midsummer, it is a time when the veil is thin and the fey folk come out of the shadows to dance in the light. These pagan holidays are rich with symbolism that predate the world religions and find meaning in the rhythms and cycles of nature. This year in the Southern Hemisphere, Letha falls on the 22nd of December and I must admit it can all be a little overwhelming for a cottage witch when we are also celebrating Yule a few days later with our brothers and sisters in the north. So I often refer to this holiday as Lethamus and intend to take it slow and in true hedge witch style I like to do things a little differently. <laughs> So in this episode, you'll see how I blend the traditions of both festivals into one magical celebration of light, love and hope. And I'm letting the fairies guide me and inspire me to fill this day with flowers, fruit and sunshine and things to delight my inner child. Letha is, after all, about that youthful energy that summer brings, providing so much scope for the imagination. Each week, as I paint the pages of my new book, I can feel it coming together, sort of growing and evolving in its own way, with surprises and touches of inspiration as I go along, just like a garden. And I love that. For you I'd build the biggest sky and spend all of my time giggling. You know, this is certainly not the way most books come together, but the beauty of self-publishing is that I can be rebellious and create as I please. So, I want to arrange the book into sections for each of the eight seasonal holidays on the fairy calendar, and so we'll paint a beautiful double page spread to introduce each one, filled with flowers and animals to represent that season. In each of the sections, I'll include activities, recipes and insights, and pages to sketch, press flowers, or jot down your own observations, favorite quotes, or ideas. The height of summer heralds one of my favourite seasons as a gardener and gatherer, a time of delicious sun-ripened fruits. In the brightest of colours, reminiscent of the sun itself, they appear like Australian Christmas decorations, hanging from the trees and tempting this little half-foot to take up her basket and climb the peach tree. My simple summer recipe to celebrate Letha will be a sweet iced tea made from peaches and lemon balm. Lemon balm is a nervous system tonic, helping to soothe anxiety or emotional turmoil and will help us flow into that dreamy, relaxed summer mood. As always, I'll share the full recipe with my Wild Roses on Patreon, but it's rather simple to make. Aside from being high in vitamin C and other essential vitamins, 
It is said that serving a peach pie or cobbler to your sweetheart will have them falling hopelessly in love and that the wood of a peach tree makes the perfect magic wand or divining rod. I don't know about you, but I'm always up for a little love and magic after drinking an iced tea. Oranges are also fantastic ingredients to celebrate the solstice, as they couldn't be more perfectly sun-shaped and symbolic. And for a little sweetness, a spoonful of raw honey. Whilst the tea is cooling, let's begin our next Letha ritual making an earth altar to greet the sun as it rises and sets. There are many gods and goddesses associated with this particular solstice, but to me, it has always felt like a festival of Freyr. Perhaps because of my Norse ancestry, it just feels right to make this floral altar in her honour, as well as to delight the midsummer garden fairies. The centerpiece is my first dahlia of the season. Isn't she spectacular? Now that the tea is chilled and iced, it's time for our Letha garden party. Soaking up the rays with a good book and sipping a refreshing tea seemed to me like the most enchanted way to spend the afternoon. I'm reading The Green Witch's Garden and it just so happens to be the first book we're reading for my witchy book club over on Patreon to be held on the 29th of January. If you'd like to join, you'll find the link in the description below. Combining the traditions of Letha and Yule, I wanted to make some decorations each one symbolising a wish for the coming year. Decorating trees is a tradition that dates back many centuries, crossing many cultures, and can actually be practised on any of the Sabbaths. For our pagan ancestors, it was a way to honour nature and call in blessings for the coming season. So, like the rocking horses that symbolise imagination and childhood wonder, and the birds that represent the joy of friendships, Adding these bows to my tree will be a symbol of the love, beauty and safety I wish to manifest in the new year. Finally, I couldn't forget to wrap up a few summer solstice presents in my very own wrapping paper. This year, I'm spoiling my inner child with a beautiful jigsaw puzzle and a whimsical fantasy novel that I intend to read in my outdoor bathtub filled with summer blooms overlooking my cottage garden. I'm very blessed to have a few wee presents from dear friends under my tree, but I knew in my heart that little Nancy would be longing for some activities to keep her occupied on the day. If I'm being cheeky and I get to choose a third gift for Freya and the summer fairies to place under my tree, it would be a charming vintage teapot cup and saucer set. Oh, that would make my dreamy, romantic heart so full. How about you, dear ones? What are you wishing for this holiday season? I'd love to hear in the comments below, or if you're a patron, you could even share a photo of your Letha wish on the Rose Garden Discord server. We're having so much fun over there, connecting with kindred spirits from around the world, and even though we're just getting started, I'm really enjoying having this extended group of friends, especially at this time of year, to be among my witches, cottage fairies and whimsical spirits, all bonding over our shared interests and mutual fascination for the natural world. I so hope you've enjoyed our time together today. 
I feel honored that my little channel is a source of joy and magic. And as the sun sets on midsummer night, I want you to remember that, just like the quote I shared at the beginning of this film, your light is astonishing. And no matter how dark and lonely the night becomes, I can see your light, even here on the other side of the world. I will see you all in the new year, but for now, here is my Letha blessing. May you be blessed on midsummer night. May the radiant sun set your sweet soul alight. May the fairies bestow you with magic and love as sunbeams of joy shine down from above.